G'day and welcome back to the channel. Now, it's been the only fine day we're supposed to get for another 10 days today. So I was very keen to get the DJI FPV digital system up in the air as quickly as possible and got out here early this morning, spent three hours um, turning it on, updating the software, linking it. Why did I spend three hours? Well, because my laptop didn't seem to like the DJI software very much. And also there was a bit of a problem with finding the right version because uh, anyway, I'll, I'll get onto that. I'll have a check with the New Zealand distributors about that because if you get thrown back to the New Zealand website and you follow the download link and you download the software, which it says in the book is DJI Assist 2, it's not the right software, okay? <laughs> Simple as that. And then the drivers, a uh, few problems with drivers and this. Anyway, yeah, most people have not had that problem. I'm not gonna gripe about it, it's just me. I'm old and easily confused, totally bewildered and befuddled. Right, so yeah, okay, first impressions, because I did get a flight in. How did I get a flight in? Well, um, I thought, what can I throw this thing in quickly? And the first thing that came to hand was of course the Outlaw 250, look at that. This, the first, well, I've got another one down there, probably saw the tease. If you go to my XJet community tab on my channel, you'll see that I posted a picture. And I'm pretty sure this came in at, was it 259 grams or 260 grams? Set up like this, ready to fly battery and everything. So, and this is a tired, heavy, old prototype. I can easily lose 15 grams. So it, flying sub 250 HD FPV with the DJI system is quite possible, practical and real. I flew 259 grams today and my first impressions, well, as I expected, it was great. Right, let's see if this flies. Where's the wind coming from? I don't feel it. It's right across there. Yes. Right, so we're recording. Put all the things in the right place. Yep, looks alright. Okay. Here, Already walking. It's um, quite bumpy out here today because we're in the lee of the hangars. So I'm just going to go down here and see how far I'm starting to get that focus thing happening already. We're getting some pixelation along the sides. And it's bumpy as. <laughs> Whoa! We're very turbulent down here because we've got wind coming from right down the wrong direction. So we'll just come back here. The picture is quite good. Very clear. And um, I'll go further down this way and we'll see what happens to the turbulent. Hopefully we can travel further and check out the range. Now I'm going to turn around and face the model. Not that it should make any difference. But now we're about 150 meters. Now that 200 meters and it's starting to get that focus pixelation. It's gone red. The, my signal indicator has gone red on the goggles, which says that this is starting to run out of range because I've gone up a bit. Let's go back down. Yeah, here we go. I'm starting to lose the signal again. Oh, no, that's about 250 meters, two, just over. Oh, and as we turn, we had a lot of pixelation and a couple of lost frames. We'll come back down. And yeah, we're coming back now. Just get down into this. Ooh, yeah, we're losing signal there. We're getting a lot of pixelation. And we're down to one bar of video. So, and I'm only mm, not even 200 meters away at the moment. So, 200, 25 milliwatts is not a comfortable power level, I'm afraid. Certainly, if you're flying fixed wing, close proximity to the ground. It's not a good experience at 25 milliwatts, so let's just go up a bit, get out of this turbulent spot, which is just here past the end of the hangars. 
But uh, when you're actually within range, you go, oh, I'm still only two bars of signal here. Yeah, let's pop back up now. When you've got plenty of signal, it's a glorious picture. It's fantastic. F fantastic image. So I noticed I've only got one record symbol flashing. I wonder if it's recording on um, both cards. I don't know. I did a flight just before and it was on both cards, so hopefully it is. Now, yeah, right. It's. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't seem to make much difference which way I'm facing. These are omnidirectional the goggles, so that's fine. And now, facing into the wind, let's come around and see which way I'm facing, so which way to approach. The beauty of HD. Okay. Notice over areas of great detail like the grass, it's highly pixelated in the distance. You just lose that resolution with, with the digital system. So it's coming into a landing, hopefully. Hopefully have a little light, helps with judging the altitude. And it's bumpy as. And we've landed, and there we go. Excellent, and I'm still recording. Now I've stopped. Oh, I see. Good as gold. So that was that was good. That was excellent. I will um, go back to the studio and tell you what I think. So mm, it's probably okay for close proximity. I went round sort of behind myself. These antennas here. Talking. I'm going to do a whole video on antennas because a lot of people have been asking questions about the antennas. Now, um, in case you don't know, this is circularly polarized, left hand circularly polarized, not right hand. So if you go and throw some think, oh, I'll make it go further, put some right-hand antennas on here. You're probably going to get worse performance. And I'm going to do a whole video, as I say, because there's things you shouldn't do. Uh, this is an omnidirectional, um, circularly polarised left-hand setup with these antennas on here, as they are. Because um, I turned around a full 360 while I was quite a while away, made no difference at all to the strength of the signal the goggles were receiving. Um, so there you go. Um, I put on a fixed wing because everybody has done multi-rotors to death. You've all seen everyone doing flippity flips with the multi-rotors. I wanted to do something different and I only had a sore amount of time so I've got a quad here I'm going to set up with this to do some more testing but it fixed wing brilliant now uh, you notice or you might have noticed I didn't have a transmitter that I didn't get a transmitter because I'm mode one I'm old school and there were no mode one transmitters in New Zealand so I said just send me the air unit and the goggles which they did and setting it up on the model it's a piece of cake I on the on the outlaw I did have the little run cam camera and transmitter just requires a power connection, well, I just connected the power to this. That's the positive and the negative. The other LEDs, I, I didn't connect to anything, and it works. And I can start recording, stop recording from the goggles. I can you know, record onto the SD card there, record onto the card here. Everything works as you'd expect it to work. It's brilliant. It's so simple. Very, very simple indeed. Uh, so, yeah, it is yeah, lovely. Um, what else can I say about it? Well. Yeah, lots more to come. Lots more to come, basically. The weather's turned septic now. It's starting to blow hard. It was actually quite windy when I did the little flight with that machine. Uh, and it's got windier, and it's going to rain. Hopefully there might be a bit of a break on Monday, the coming Monday, which is Tuesday and the rest of the... No, it's Sunday and the rest of the world, because we're a day ahead. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Um, just letting you know. And someone said, oh, you're making... You know, you're trying to squeeze this for what's worth. You're going to string it out. Yeah, I am. But not be for the reasons you think. Now, I could do one huge, great video answering all the questions that people have asked and covering all my findings and all the analysis that I'm doing. It would be three hours, people, and you would all fall asleep in the first five minutes. So what I'm going to do is break it up into segments of interest. Like I so I'm doing a video on antennas and about the power levels and all that sort of stuff. Um, people say this is 700 milliwatts in FCC mode. The instructions just simply say it is less than than one watt, less than 30 decibels above one milliwatt, which is one watt. So probably is 700 milliwatts. So what I'm going to be doing, though, is just looking at those antenna options. Also, range. What's the range going to be like? Well, I've already proven today it's about 250 metres in my little setup on a fixed wing. And I wasn't hugging the ground like I usually do. I was, you know, um, maybe, uh, maybe 20, 30 feet above the ground. So it should have had a reasonable range. But 25 milliwatts is just not very much. So if you're in the EU or New Zealand or Australia, you're going to get 25 milliwatts. You're probably going to want to jack it up to the 700 milliwatts. Seriously, you probably are. Or you may find it less useful than it otherwise would be. Someone complained in one of my videos, oh, you're telling people how to break the law by jacking up the power. 
Well, yeah, but they're going to do it anyway. I mean, how many people fly 25 milliwatts analog FPV in countries where that's the limit? Seriously, how many? I don't see any hands <laughs> because, uh, and, and how many problems has it caused? I don't see major problems being caused with other services on the 5.8 gig band. No one seems to be, you know, having problems. And also, I wonder if this is the first time that DJI has limited the power like this because I see people flying Phantom 4s in, in EU countries and getting four kilometers of range. You're not going to get four kilometers on 25 milliwatts with this, I tell you that. So what is the difference? Are they actually running 25 milliwatts? Or is everyone jacking up the power because it's the only way to get real satisfaction out of using something like this? Unless you just want to fly around really close, in which case get control line and just a box you can look right through. It'll be just as good. So that's it for my first thoughts. As I say, it works pretty much as I expected it to work. Um, I When I was flying near the, range, the, the limit of range, it was a bit uncomfortable. It was a bit uncomfortable because I'm used to flying through static and noise, but I'm not used to suddenly having the picture freeze and then come back. That's quite scary when suddenly nothing's changing. You know the model's still flying, but you don't know where. <laughs> Even when it's just one frame out of the blue that freezes, oh, it's quite scary, but it's something you get used to. You get used to it pretty quickly. So I'd say, yep, so far I'm still very impressed with this setup. And over the coming days, I will be doing a series of videos and answering as many of the questions that you've asked as I can get around to. In the last video, people said, oh, you didn't even take it out of the box. No, of course not. I wanted to find out from you what you needed to know. And a lot of people did respond. So I'm going to address all those issues if I can. That's it. Thanks for watching. Now, thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't. Tell me why. Thanks to my Patreon supporters who prevent the mid-rolls. You see the little thing along the bottom that tells you. And again, if there's still something that you'd like to know that no one else has asked, then ask it in the comment section below here and I'll do my best to include it in the list of things I'm going to be looking at. In the meantime, thank you to Ferntech New Zealand who provided this unit, lent me this unit for the testing I'm going to be doing. And uh, yes, yeah, stay tuned. More to come. Bye for now.